The Code is Law documentary is one that anybody in crypto or really anybody even outside of crypto insecurity should watch. If you've ever been in a war room or security incident, you know that heart beating moment when you're nervous that you're not going to be able to rescue the funds. This documentary does a phenomenal job of capturing that. I, I stood up like a shot. I had food on my lap, just crashed to the floor, I broke the plate. It's Terra heroin. And it's also a bit of a walk down crypto hack history with some of the biggest and most influential hacks in the cryptocurrency world, such as the DAO hack, indexed finance, mango markets, Kyber swap, and more. And it really drives home this question of what are we building in Web3? Are we building this decentralized, permissionless system where code really is law, or is the intent of the smart contracts important? There are a lot of people I respect in this documentary, like Lefteris and Gonzalo. And uh, Lawrence is also in this. Just kidding, I have a lot of respect for him too. Now I want to go over the hacks that they talk about in this documentary, and I don't want to spoil what happens in here because I do want you to go see the documentary, although I guess, but I guess this is historical, so it'd be like me spoiling what happened to Germany at the end of World War II. The first hack they talk about, obviously, is the Dow hack. This is the most infamous attack pretty much of all time. There are a hundred articles and videos on this hack, but. I want to just focus on what the actual issue was here. The DAO hack was a classic and real first big viewing of what we come to know as reentrancy attack. If you want to learn more about those, there's a link in the description to head over to Cypher and Updraft to learn more. And what's crazy about this classification of bugs is that this happened all the way back in 2016, but we still see reentrancy vulnerabilities today. Now, we have gotten much, much better in the nine years since the DAO hack, where we have automated tools like Slither and Adarin, which check for these reentrancy patterns. AIs are phenomenal at finding these as well. And this is probably one of the easiest bugs as of today to find, which is really good for us as a security industry. It's not so good that for nine years, it was an infamous bug and it stayed and it plagued and it stole tens or hundreds of millions of dollars, even after the Dow hack, which lost hundreds of millions of dollars. The next big hack this documentary goes over is the indexed finance hack. And this was one of the bigger implementations of what it, they called like a flash loan attack, but I prefer to call them Oracle manipulation attacks. Unfortunately, even as of today, still run pretty rampant because a lot of people and a lot of protocol developers don't really understand how oracles and pricing mechanisms work. An Oracle manipulation attack is when a protocol uses a pricing mechanism that isn't very secure. We've got more information on this type of attack on Cypher and Updraft as well, but the summary of this is essentially you manipulate the price of some asset, some protocol is checking the price of the asset to make some calculations itself, and you screw up those calculations because you change the price of the asset. There's a lot of clever ways to do this type of thing. But the key piece of these types of attacks is basically anytime you use some type of liquidity pool or decentralized exchange like Uniswap as an Oracle, you're basically setting yourself up to get wrecked. The reason people call these flash loans attack is because flash loans allow you to you know, take out a very, very large loan, which allows you to manipulate these decentralized exchanges very quickly and then pay off these loans very quickly. There's a whole lot of DeFi stuff here that I'm not going to go into for less technical people. This is all in Cypher and Updraft if you want to learn more. Takeaway to the security industry from this type of attack was, well, we really shouldn't be using liquidity pools as an oracle. Unfortunately, a lot of protocols really, really, really want to do this because they think it is cheaper or faster or easier and they end up getting wrecked. The Mango Markets attack, which they talk about in this documentary as well, was a little bit more interesting in the fact that instead of temporarily changing the price and you know screwing over an Oracle, the person genuinely actually changed the price by manipulating low liquidity tokens, or basically tokens that are very cheap. If there's one Apple in the world and I buy the Apple, and then I say, okay, you can buy this Apple for me for $10,000, I've essentially spiked the price of apples to $10,000 because I bought all the apple. When you have assets where it's very easy to buy all of them, you can genuinely manipulate the market. So like I said, whether or not code is actually law in all these cases is kind of still pending in some of these. In some of these cases, the hackers were found and have not been put in jail yet. And in some of them, the hackers haven't been found yet. So this documentary is really, really interesting. And it really dives into this question of like, what is this smart contract world that we're building? And I really, really, really recommend everybody watch it. But it also makes me kind of like facepalm because I'm like, oh, we're like still getting hit by some of these attacks. Damn. And I've had the curriculum up on Cypher and Updraft to look for these attacks as well as security researchers. So like, I don't know, like go watch this documentary and then go take the security course in Cypher and Updraft so that this, this stops happening. Thank you.